So that's my that's my first question. I'm asking, who's, who's your best bud? Yeah. Just because he's gonna flow. Mm -hmm. Then I'm just. What's the name? What's the name of the show? Uh, bud brought a buddy. Say it again. Bud brought a buddy. Okay. Hey, what's up, Still the Nation? And welcome back to another episode of Bud Brought a Buddy. And today I have a very special guest, Juju Smith Schuster. Yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, thank you, everybody. No, nah, thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, this is awesome. You know, I was kind of, kind of sad. You know, you had, you know, Mika, you had TJ, and then I think earlier this week you was like, "Yo, I want you on my show," and I was super excited to be here. So I appreciate you. Thank no, you. No, so no, man. Appreciate you even taking the time out today. I know you got a busy schedule. You know, I know everything lit with you. <laughs> so, man, you know, uh, you know, just thank you for thinking of the small people. I uh, appreciate that, man. This is an awesome show. No, nah, it's good. So. Obviously, the name of the show is Bud Brought a Buddy, and today I brought my buddy, Juju. I want to ask you first, uh, who's your favorite bud? My favorite bud, man, uh, uh, that's tough, man. You talking about on a team, or are you talking about like Just in, in life in general, in general. In life? yeah. Um, I have a friend uh, named, named Darian. He's, a, he's so funny, man. He's a kid, both went to USC, Persian kid. And you know, me just being around him, he was just like totally different from like the whole football life style and everything. Okay. Versus like a regular student. So he was really, he was really good. He's like one of my buds, like today, like I still call like almost every other day. We just talk about life, you know? Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. It's always good to have somebody in your corner like that. Yeah, who's your bud? Uh, I would say my best bud would be my brother, Shane, or Moot. Well, both of them. Yes, sir. Okay, you know, okay. Both of those guys are my best bud. So, uh, you know, uh, since we were little kids, you know, been growing up with those guys. Oh yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, Family for sure. Everything. Who's your most influential bud? Oh man, that's a good one. Uh, honestly, man, we, 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 I mean, you talk about, I gotta be my dad, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, you know how it is. Growing up, yeah. you know, we didn't have much and he pretty much, you know, took two buses, you know, walked half a mile, you know, just to go to work, just to provide, you know, for my family. So, yeah. you know, to this day, man, he's he's the guy that I always say, like, you know, if I look up to anybody, it's gonna be him. Sacrifice, sacrifice. For sure, man. It's always what it is. So it's man. about, man. Most different. You were big in Fortnite and you were big on Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. Which one of those games do you get the most uh, fan reaction from. So little kids come in, I know they like to talk trash. Yeah. I know people like to talk trash to you on the game. So on which one of those games do you have like a lot of, a lot of back talk? I, I would definitely say, uh, honestly, both were more trash talking uh, on, you know, Call of Duty because mm -hmm. I'm in a lobby where we're playing like Search and Destroy and they see my name, like still a Juju 19. And they're like, you're not the real Juju. Yeah. And then they just end up talking trash from the other team. Where they were like Fortnite, you know, you always play with somebody that's on your team, you know, so it's kind of like, a, you know, quads or trios or duos, and they're always just like big fans. So more trash talking is definitely on Call of Duty. Those <laughs> are like the, 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 the really like, you know, rated R kids who are, you know, in, yeah. at home just talking the most trash for no Saying whatever they want, come to mind. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. <laughs> so still on the gaming part, uh, I've been hearing a lot of stuff about this uh, Team Diverge gaming. Uh, yes, sir. Can you kind of like explain exactly what that is for us? Yeah, man. So Team Diverge is my new gaming company. I've started. Honestly, it's been. I've always been a big passion about video games. So you know, growing up, I've you know been a part of different organizations, and I was like, man, I want to start my own business. I want to start my own gaming org. So Team Diverge, you know, we're launching tomorrow. Uh, uh -huh. the, the word diverge means you know it's from diversity of you know coming from no matter where you come from, who you are, musician, student, actor, athlete, you know, we come together and you know, gaming just connects us together as a world, you know? No, nah, I'm and I think it's really cool, man. So, uh, yeah, so that's why I made Team Diverge. Okay, got you. So, listen, make sure you go support Juju in that aspect. Get all the game and stuff that comes with it. You know, uh, you know support the dream. It's all that's good. good. Juju. Show some love, baby. Most definitely. All right, so I'm gonna ask you about one of our teammates and uh, someone you're uh, real close with on the offensive side of the ball and I'm also close with, James Conner. Just what type of uh, what what type of feel do you get from him? He's beat cancer. He's beat cancer. You know, he's still coming out here playing. Even during the Corona pandemic, he still came and didn't opt out. Even though he's a high risk candidate, and he still didn't opt out. He still came here, and gave us his all. Yeah, man, that, and that's James for you, man. That's James. He always give you 110 percent. You know, whether the situation's not going right for him, he still come out here and he does it for his teammates. You know, um, I was fortunate. 
to be drafted here at the same class as James. And James from Pittsburgh, he's been here four years before, you know, playing for uh, Pitt. And for myself, you know, I was kind of new to the city and he kind of took me under his wing. Like, hey, yo, Juju, this is what you do, this is what you don't do. Don't go here, don't go there. Like, that place is good, that place is not good. Yeah. And honestly, man, to see what he did, you know, reading his book and see what he's done over the time of his years, mm -hmm. of him, you know, playing football and, and like dealing with that, that it, it goes a long way, man. It shows, um, it shows so much from one person. No, and, I, sure. and for him to be here during the season and playing and, and balling out, yeah. what he's doing is he's doing it not just for us, but obviously for his family, teammates, and everybody else. No, definitely. So you're obviously from California, and uh, you know California is a, is a great state in my opinion. I love the vibes out there. I love LA. Yes, yeah, sir. You know, I love everything about Cali. It's 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 so calm and relaxing to me. But uh, Long Beach Poly, that's, that's cool, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you guys got a lot of NFL talent in that city. I don't yes, know sir. how big it is, I really do my research, but you guys have guys like uh, Mercedes Lewis. Deshaun Jackson. Yeah, Deshaun Jackson. Willie McGinnis. Willie McGinnis. We just got so many guys at that school, man. Yeah. Like, it's it's even hard for you to get into the school. It's a mm -hmm. public school and we got 5,000 students. That's wild. I graduated with 1,200 wow. students. Like wow. our graduation class was four hours. So it was like, we started at six, finished at 10. But like to go to that school, it was like, you were going, kind of like going to like a mini mini junior college, uh -huh. uh, and we were just a powerhouse in sports. And that, it wasn't even just football, it was baseball, soccer, water polo, swimming, diving, like literally everything, like bath, it, it was so crazy. But, you know, I went to that school because I wanted to be compete with the best. Yeah. Uh, and, and, I mean, it paid off. Look where I'm at now, you know, I can't complain. No, for different. Uh, and, and like you said, you know, you, all those guys, like Deshaun Jackson, Lou McGinnis, like you built that, that culture, that background of, yep. you know, these are, traditional guys mm -hmm. so now i can go back and like yo this is my alumni class i'm a part of that class and you know like, just keep it moving so exactly. i appreciate you know long as poly man that's where it's at man yeah, we probably, i don't know real. if we'll be y'all school how, how good was your school nah we were basketball school baby okay okay, we're okay, basketball okay, okay. School. we, 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 we got them we got them we got them in football, in football not basketball baby <laughs> you no know, uh, aaron zeta baby <laughs> <laughs> so uh long beach poly great line of athletes uh great uh great place to be in sports. Also, you played for Snoop Dogg for your I youth did. team. How was that experience and how was Snoop Dogg as a coach? I know a lot of people see him as just a rapper yeah. and, a, and a public figure, but explain to us his coaching side and how was that experience from you even playing on that team? Man, that team was awesome. Man. Honestly, I would say our team was like an all-star team. Like we yeah. had like 22 credit players. Oh yeah? Yeah. So Madden. Like on some Madden, like crazy, like, players but at the end of the day like playing for Snoop was like yeah like he, he knew the offense he knew the defense like he literally coaches up you know what we should do what we should not do how how we run our routes what we should do but at the end of the day like as a kid you just like Snoop <laughs> Snoop <laughs> like, the Snoop but the yeah no nah, it was awesome man he created this league man called Snoop League and it, it was cool because you know people who were oversized who couldn't make weight yeah uh, they were able to play in it you just have to be of age so um like I said, I wanted to be part of the best of the best, and that's kind of where I started at. You know, I kind of left Orange County, went, and I kind of just stayed in Long Beach um, after, and I just like, yo, I'm gonna be here with them. You know what I'm saying? That's lit. Paid off, man. I can't complain. It did. I'm, so, I'm glad they said somebody that weight. I had to put an X on my hip when I was so big and little league one time. I had it. <laughs> I had it, but uh, we changed the rules. And we cheated <laughs> and I played, you know, so, <laughs> so it is what it is. Man, you a man of many celebrations. You have been the most creative celebration person that we've seen in, a, in the NFL, yeah. personally. If Madden had celebration rating, <laughs> your rating would be 101, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, I want to kinda ex you to kind of explain a couple of celebrations that, that we gonna have on film. Oh, for sure, man, for sure. Yeah. So explain that. Celebration. Yeah, man. So that one was actually very interesting, bro. Like, I'm a big, you know, anime guy. So we were talking about, you know, I want to do something like Dragon Ball Z, like Kamehameha. Mm -hmm. So that's I did that one for the uh, the Ravens game, and it went viral, bro. Like people really nah, took sure. it because, you know, now that you when you do celebrations, you're not only doing what's but like what's pop culture right then and there, but you're also reaching another fan base. Yeah. So how I think of it is that, you know, I do the celebration, I'm going to reach out a fan base from anime and Dragon Ball Z and have them like, yo, Juju watch Dragon Ball Z? Oh, he's doing that celebration? Oh, we need to, we need to like tune in? Like, what, what was that? So yeah. that was a cool one. Um, this next one right here, 
we look at it, uh, it's basically me giving birth to a baby. Uh, <laughs> although, like, <laughs> a guy giving birth to a baby sounds unreal, but, like, who's going to do it? And, I, honestly, uh, James is there, so James He the caught the baby. baby? Yeah, so James caught the baby, delivered the baby, gave it to me, and I kind of just, you know, cradled it. Yeah. So based, that was the baby one. Uh, that one's actually in Madden. That one's actually pretty often. I do that one pretty often in Madden. You know, okay. giving birth probably like 50 times a day in Madden. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this next one right here, you can see it's uh, me doing the woe and uh, our go, go, go. But uh, me and James watching was like, yo, we, we need to do a TikTok dance. Uh -huh. So TikTok's popular right now. Obviously, we yeah. do everything that's with TikTok. So we grab the fans from TikTok, give them to like tune in. And basically, I get you know my teammates involved. You know, I try to do that. The more people you have, I think the better it is. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, no, he did not just do that. Doing that with Ebron, who's that? Yeah, it was Ebron and Tay, man. I think that was really cool. Uh, so this next celebration right here yeah. is so funny, bro. So I wanted to. I, I before the game, I was like, "Yo, Rev, can I grab the pylon and do a selfie?" Uh -huh. And he said, "No, that's a penalty." So I was like, "Okay, cool." So before I did that. And I, before I did that, I was like, man, I gotta do something with the, with the, with the camera, you know, the, the piling camera. So basically went down, just like like this, you know, just chilling, you know, having my feet, going back and forth with my boys. I don't think Al knew what I was really doing. Uh, <laughs> Tay didn't really know what I was doing. But yeah. There's a camera there, and I was like, man, Monday night football, man, we gotta go crazy. On Monday night, definitely. On Everybody Monday night. Uh, so this next celebration, uh, we're basically doing a Dolphins, like the, like the, the humping thing, basically. Um, we weren't not you know necessarily humping because you'll get fined so for that. yeah you'll get fined for three humps three humps three pumps you only can do two pumps two pumps and it's not a fine five to like thirty thousand dollar fine the crinkle bear rule yeah put it up put the crinkle bear rule <laughs> so we did that one with the boys I think that was really cool we you know we all tagged off and then this one right here was uh, uh, there's people named jo uh, I'm Joy and, and Tosh uh, TikTokers. And they did this dance uh, I went viral and they do it. Shout every, out to both of them. Yeah, shout out to you guys, man. Appreciate y'all. So I did this dance and I practiced it before and I went out there score and I did it and this just worked out so perfectly. So uh, I, I think it was really cool, man. Uh, like I said, TikTok, TikTok right now is like pop culture. Yeah. So being able to grab them and put it into like football, you can grab their fan base. It was, it was really, really crazy. Wow, we did so many celebrations already. All right, this celebration right here, man. Uh, so right here we have uh, James Conner and Chase doing boxing in the corner. And as Chase is running up, you know, me and James, man. And the thing with Chase, bro, this past weekend, when he scored four times, Chase was like, bro, I don't even know what I'm doing out there after I score. Like, and we told Chase, like, yo, look, Chase, our celebration that we're gonna do, bro, like, we come up together, like, bro, just come over there. We're doing a fish celebration. So the fishing pole is basically James has a fishing pole. He's really a fish in, which is me. I'm uh -huh. shaking on the ground, slowly working towards James, and then Chase is supposed to be there. But Chase ends up getting there. It, it, you know, obviously, he took a picture with us, so it was really cool. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, man. So we got we got a lot of celebrations, man, coming. So it's really, really cool, man. So we got many more coming. Like I said, the more people you have, the better. What's your celebration, bro? I know, I know you just so yeah. So me, flat. the one I do the, the most of yeah is kind of like is, is I'm scooping up bodies. That's what I want to do. I'm getting I'm yeah. getting a shovel. I'm scooping up the body. I'm digging the hole for them uh, when I'm gonna put them in. Yeah. So you know I try to do that when it's a very big play. Some something happen in a you know game changing play. So that's no, what I try to do. That's awesome. Time. And I like I like aggressive stuff. Mm -hmm. So anything aggressive, I'm trying to do it. Yes, so, sir. All right, so a lot of people see your success on the field, and they see you having fun, they see you dancing, they see you with the celebration and the big plays, but they, what they don't see is the hard work and dedication that you put in the off season and off the field. Can you kind of like give us a glimpse of something you know, that you feel like is the most important thing that you do in the off season to prepare you for the season? I mean, honestly, I think it's just, you know, staying healthy and like constantly, you know, working on your body. Um, but I've learned this year, you know, as going into my fourth year, I think the more times I've worked out, mm -hmm. like say I put two hours in and working out, I will probably put three hours in treatment. Yeah. You know, just because, you know, I'll always be prepared and make sure my body's at the best of the best. And I noticed that, you know, I will go hard every day. You know, I will work out in the morning, work out in the evening. And in the morning, it's like an hour and 30. In the evening, it's like an hour and 30. Mm -hmm. So right there alone, you're looking at three hours. 
So I would, I would, I would come home and I was like, man, I got to put four hours of treatment. You know, whether it's like two hours after my workout in the morning, mm -hmm. two hours here, an hour here. And that's something I focus on a lot. And that's some, that's something where I got myself to be like, okay, cool, like, you know, I feel good. Like just, just going into my fourth year, going into my contract year, I'm like, okay, like this is, this is where I'm at. Yeah. And you know, even to this day, you know, I still put in the hours of, you know, the amount of times you know we work out here, going home, getting in treatment. Yep. So. Uh, it's helped me a long way, man. No, that's dope, man. And Devin and Pan, you know, Juju still going hard, still killing. No, uh, you know, just one of the best it is. So, you a Rose Bowl champion? Yeah, sir. Uh, yeah. You know, I didn't get to experience that. <laughs> 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 yeah, that cup, uh, man, the Rose Bowl trophy is nice. Yeah, so how was that? Oh, it was awesome, man. Uh, we played against, actually played against Penn State, bro. Okay. So when I got drafted, I got a lot of like, Penn State are fans saying like, yo, we hate you, you know, you beat the Penn State, you know, we beat Saquon and all of them. Uh, but it was a fun game, bro. Saquon yeah. went off, uh, McShirley went off, uh, Godwin went off and her team. And it was a shootout, bro. We literally were like going back and forth. And um, it, it was a fun game, it was awesome. And I think after that, that's when I was like, man, we want to Rose Bowl, I'm about to just dip out. Time, time to go to NFL. Time so. to go, mm -hmm. for sure. You left your mark. Left the mark, man, left, man. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. No, nah, for sure. I know the parents are happy. Everything worked out for the workout. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah, what, what bowl game you win? You, you win any bowl game? Oh, uh, next question. <laughs> 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 so, uh, all right, so you, uh, you you first came into the league, you didn't have your license, you were riding a bike. We all knew the bike was a big story. Yeah, man. We, we was mad at people, me personally, I was mad I wanted to fight somebody that they stayed on your bike. <laughs> So I'm like, you stole Juju bike. We had meetings at 1 p.m. My mom's over. Uh, we just had done, like, just eating, hanging out. I was like, Mom, I'm about to go to work. I got this meeting. So I go down. My bike's outside. And it's supposed to be locked up, but it's gone. Yeah. I'm like, gone. Like, took the chain, too. <laughs> like, I, I think they probably, like, they, they could have had my keys. I was like, yo, this, this is not happening right now. Man, somebody stole my bike. <laughs> I ain't got a bike no more. I'm walking towards practice. This is crazy. So mind you, I'm in Southside just to like get to work. Like to bike to work, honestly, it's just like five, probably like, honestly like two minutes, bro. Yeah. If I'm really pounding down the hill, I'm moving. So at this point, man, this is like 12.55. I'm like, oh, I'm done. I'm, I'm walking to work. I'm already thinking like, man, my bike got stolen. I'm, I'm on Snapchat, <laughs> Instagram, my bike got stolen. It was sad, it was sad. And then the media man. caught it, and then everyone was posting, everyone's talking about it, and I was like, Juju's bike missing. And like the biggest story was like, it wasn't even Juju's bike missing, it was like, Juju doesn't have his license. Yeah. Juju doesn't have his license. So I was like, damn, I gotta get my license now. Everyone's, this is a lot of pressure. So then for a couple of weeks, you know, I've been uh, training with Al. Al will take me in his truck, uh -huh. drive around. And then I ended up getting my license, which is so funny, man. And the guy who returned my bike, because um, we, we put a, a prize out there. Yeah. Like two home game tickets, $200. And the guy who returned it uh, was the person who actually stole my bike. So he stole it, right? Yeah. And he gave it back? Yeah. They found See, it, that, that's they, the real. Where are the. Come here, come closer. <laughs> this is a prime example of people stealing your stuff and helping you look for it. <laughs> A major problem in the communities. Legit, man. Legit. So, you got your license. A lot of people don't like to admit how many times they actually took the driver's test. How many times did you have to take the driver's test before you passed? So, the driver's test, I only took it once. You took it once? So you the passed The test, I, t I took it twice. You took it twice? Yeah, I, the real test is like, there was a sign I've never seen before. Yeah. In the middle of nowhere, and I... I missed it, man. I was just like, oh my gosh. So I went back, took it again, and obviously passed. Okay. Man, I took the driver test three times. Three times? The first time in Macon. I'm taking the driver test, I'm in Macon. Well, I'm saying like y'all know. I'm in Macon, Georgia, taking the driver test. So one way, and it's obviously a veer. I turned down the one way streak. <laughs> the lady in the driver test is screaming to the top of her lungs. <laughs> Ah, you trying to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> so I instantly knew I failed the test. So before I got back, I, I thought of a lie in my head to tell my mama, like why I failed the why I failed the driver's test. Yeah. 
And I came in like, she didn't even want me to pass. She was, <laughs> she was yelling at me the whole time. But I should go to. So I had to make it off of her. So my mom get mad. She come up to the lady like, so my son said you didn't want him to pass. And knowing to find out, I went out the wrong way. Then the second time, I didn't put my seatbelt on. I leaned the seat all the way back. So I'm driving just like this, taking the driver's <laughs> here. The lady like, you not gonna put your seatbelt on? I'm like, halfway down the road, it's a fail. <laughs> So the third time I just passed it, it was, yeah. I had to do everything the right way. That's but, funny, man. But it was funny though, man. Did you have trouble parallel parking or not? Nah, see, I can drive. That's the, that's the thing about it. Yeah, I can drive too. Park. All right, so who would you rather get into a fight with in the ring? Mike Tyson in his prime or Floyd in his prime? Oh, I'm picking Floyd. You sure? Yes. So you rather take 100 punches then one punch. Yes. You sure? Yes. 100%. You about to take Bruh, a hundred? Do you see Mike Tyson now? You see what he's doing now? That's not even, that's like, how old is he? He gotta be 50. Bro, like 50 plus. Yeah. Vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> I'm not taking, no, no, no. I'm taking a little. Oh, the quickie. Eat quickie, quickie. <laughs> Mike Tyson. Mm, mm, mm. All in your chest and stomach. Mm. Bro, you not, like, yes, that's rib cage. There's no return. Bro, I don't know, bro. I'm, I'm honestly taking it. I'm taking it. I'll fight taking Mike Tyson blood. for 100,000. You're not fighting Mike Tyson. But if anything, bro, you're going to be on there for the, just just for the show. Yeah, for sure. And you probably lay down within <laughs> a minute. <laughs> unless you run around the ring. I don't know. All right, so. Music is a is a is a is a is a key part of today's world. So give me your three uh, best artists that you listen to right now. My three best artists, man. So number one, Juice World. I like Lil Uzi. Hmm. And I knew artist uh, Baby Jungle. Nice. That just came out. No, what about you? Sure. What about you? For sure. Man, I like I like Jungle. I like Twenty One, of course. I like Trouble. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, so. Fire. Just, fire line up. That's fire what it line is. up. That's what it is. <laughs> so what's your what's one food that you got to have on pregame? Uh, one food that you think gives you energy? Man, one thing that gives me energy, uh, I definitely got to have breakfast. Like, like a, a really solid breakfast. Like, I really like French toast, mm -hmm. and I really love uh, uh, pancakes. But if you really want me on my, my good day, go ahead and throw me some brown sugar glaze, mm. you know, bacon. Uh, which is really nice. So, uh, but for the most part, those, those are my, you know, breakfast is my way. You know, even if it's a night game, I gotta have a great breakfast. Got in to. Have, in order to play how I want to play. That's a meal of champions. Oh, for sure, for bro. sure. Hey so, man, yeah. I've seen and tasted the new Juju Juice, which is no fluke. Yeah. It's good, yeah. it tastes healthy, and it tastes real fresh. Yeah. So explain that whole Juju Juice concept and where it come from, how it, who, who introduced it to you? Yeah. And what made you run with it? So, you know, crazy part, crazy part, bro. If you ever, uh, you ever had an acai bowl from, from here? Yeah. How uh -huh. they make them bowls? Yeah. So the same place from that company. They're called Salute Juicery. Uh, they're based out here in Pittsburgh, which is really cool. So I used to go almost like every day during the summer. Like, go get an acai bowl, acai bowl, get a pee bowl. And I was obsessed at the point. I was like, yo, how can I get a discount? So I ended up hitting up Salute Juicery through Instagram. And I was like, yo, I want to see if I get a discount. They was like, why don't we just make you a juice? And the bougie bowl. Yeah. And like people don't even know about the bougie bowl. So like the acai bowl is like the bougie bowl version. Mm. It was like bougie's like little like dog face in it, you know, using the fruit, so it's just really cool. But the juju juice, man, it, honestly, it's just orange, apples, um, and mangoes in it. And literally, like it's good for your body. It's healthy, it's smooth, um, it's lit, it's sweet, it is it's not sour, it's something that you don't wanna you know, in one shot take, you know, yeah. it's more so like, yo, let me enjoy this. No, nah, definitely. Honestly, I think y'all, I think y'all loved it, man. I, I pass, you see me pass it out to everybody, the teammates yeah. and everybody, so. It's really, it really is good. And we can find it where at? Where at Salute, Salute Juicery, there's one in Oakland, there's one in Shadeside, and there's one in Swickley. So check it out. For sure. And the cereal too. Oh, and don't, yeah, the cereal, I dropped that a while ago, but in Giant Eagle, the Jumping Jujus, um, it's lit, man. They're kind of like Captain Crunch, but that's the guy tried out. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, man. If you got kids, go out there and get the jumping jujus. Oh, for sure. So what's your favorite place to eat at in Pittsburgh right now? The number one place you go to 
go-to vibes uh, and good food. For me, uh, Korean barbecue is kind of like my vibe. So there's this place called Soju. Mm -hmm. um, it's in Garfield. It's really, really nice. A super low-key spot. Um, definitely, like, you will never find a football player there. Yeah. You will find no athletes. It's literally just like regular people just hanging out, chilling out. It's like the outdoors, the indoors vibes. Uh, but those, that's my go-to, man. You gotta, definitely got to check it out. So, Stiddle Nation, thank you for tuning in again. This is the third episode of Bud Brought a Buddy. And I brought my bud, Juju. And Juju, I want to, man, thank you for taking the time out your busy day, man. They got a real busy schedule for coming on the show and uh, just blessing the fans with your presence. No, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. It's lit. <laughs> it's litty.